Hello everyone and welcome. I know it's been forever and a day since I've made a video. Uh, I've really missed making content. Uh, I just have not had the time or the mental space to really film anything and um, I like to color very much. It's kind of sad. Uh, but I'm hoping to be able to start doing that more again. Um, this video, I'm going to be showing what I have been working on for the last, I don't know, six months, I think. That's about when I last made a completed picture video, but it might be even longer than that. I don't know. I'm, um, I'm sorry for being quiet for so long. Uh, so I'll just get right into it. Um, the first book that I have to show, I'm going to do the whips first, just because they're faster, um, is in Sigar Oak Segner. And I've just done the background. And I used, um, oh, what are they? It's a watercolor paint that uh, has this pearlescent and um, gold in it. It's really pretty. It's one of my favorite. Uh, paints to use for backgrounds. Um, I was debating, one reason why this is still a whip is I was debating as to what color I wanted to do the mirror um, or whatever this is the back of. I think it's a mirror. I don't know. Um, and then I was trying to decide if I wanted to do something more with the background. Uh, I might do like some music, a music stamp or maybe a word stamp, which you'll see what I mean in another picture. Um, the next whip is in Tales from the Forest Kingdom. Um, let's see, where are you? Right here. So it's this, again, just a background. This is with the Grimbacher, um watercolors. Oh goodness, I can't think of my terms. It's been too long. <laughs> um, but it's got um, the way that it dries and the way that it interacts on the paper. It um, has these pools of pigment. Uh, oh, I almost got the word. I almost got it. Oh, that's fine. Um, so I just have the background started on there. I probably won't do much more with the background. <clears throat> um, next up is a whip in A Million Kawaii Cuties. Uh, this is mostly, I mean, it's, I'm almost done with the background. Um, I um, bought the Master's Touch acrylic markers uh, from Hobby Lobby because um, I wanted to see if they compared to Posca pens because... <laughs> can't pay $20 for Posca pins or however much they are now. Um, and uh, so far I've been really impressed with the coverage that I've gotten. Um, it can get a little streaky, but uh, so all of this is the Posca marker. And then when I'm done with the background, um, I'll finish coloring some of the characters, probably add a little like shadow, um, but I don't know, I thought it, this was kind of fun to make super colorful with all these cute little characters. So that's in A Million Quiet Cuties. My most recent completed page is in My Recent Dark Asian by Rita Berman. Um, right here. Um, it's this picture. Uh, I used my... Uh, I think I just used re regular watercolor for the background and then I used my set of, oh gosh, what are they? They're really nice. Goodness, see, I am just really tired. Sorry. <laughs> I really wanted to make this video and get this out there. So anyways, excuse my lack of brain function right now. Um, but I did use some really nice colored pencils. They blended very beautifully. Um, 
So yeah, that's that was uh, my most recent completed page. And then I used Arteza uh, white gel pen for a few embellishments in the ocean. Um, this is a picture by Chris Reniak. I did this one in July. Um, so this was also with the uh, acrylic markers. And I just wanted to keep it simple and cute. Um, so this is probably how I'll shade the other picture that I showed you. And then I did these little highlight embellishments also with the Arteza uh, white gel pen. Um, so you can see they work pretty well. Um, this is from one of his cute little monsters coloring books I have the download for. And then... Oh, I forgot I did one in Matchstick Mouse. I was having a lot of fun playing with the Master's Touch Markers. So this is another one that I did. Um, it's kind of fun because um, you get the feeling of coloring with markers, but you get a really nice um, look to it. It's not as streaky as a marker. Um, uh, opaque, that's where it gives a nice opaque coverage. And then you can add, um, sh you know, just simple shading and highlights for a very illustrated look. So I thought they would be perfect in this book. So that was a nice quick, I think it took me like, a, you know, 45 minutes to color this page. <laughs> so very quick and easy. Now one that did not, oh, this took hours and hours and hours. So... Actually, I have not done a completed pages video for a really long time because I worked on this picture. I think I showed the whip, maybe, but um, I did it around Easter and I finished it a little while after. So it is this picture right here. There's a drawing from my son. Um, but yeah, this picture took forever to do. But it is one of my favorite pictures that I've colored. Um, I think I just, the colors are absolutely beautiful. I have this purple marker that I used. And then, so I used the Stedler, pine, or the water-based markers to base all of the flowers and the leaves and the background. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I shaded... Uh, I believe with my polychromos pencils, yeah, and then I used glitter gel pen um, for the centers of the poppies, and then one reason, I, I so I did the background first, one reason it took me a while to finish is I was really trying to decide how I wanted to do this metal part, because I wanted it to match, but I didn't want it to blend in too much either, so I pulled you know, a dip, a lighter purple for their bows, and then just lighter, softer for everything else. So it's still springtime. It still like um, works with the other colors, but it's also different enough that it pops out. So this one took me so long to do, but it was absolutely worth it. <clears throat> um, yeah, I love that picture. So that's an Animal Wonderland special by Kanuko Ogusa. And then another completed picture in Daydreams. If I ever finish a Hannah Carlson book, it'll probably be this one because it's the one I've colored the most in. Okay, this picture. This one was so fun to do. Um, it was also a, just a very quick one. I, I think it took me... Oh... In um, I have very little time to just sit down and color, so it took me mm, several days to work on, but it was not a very long process. So I have that same like watercolor paint that I used. Um, I'm blanking on the name, so I apologize if I have the remembrance. I will put it in the um, description box. Um, but it's this really pretty blue pearlescent with some like gold in there as well. 
and then I got this stamp uh, and I stamped the background I like blocked the bumblebee off stamped this background which it was it's a little patchy in some places but I think it still turned out really pretty and then I used my uh, fine tech um, gold watercolors for the stars and the pearlescent ones for the wings and uh, some of the embellishments on the bumblebee and then polychromos for these jewels and then it kind of looked a little dull so I, I took a gamble and I used the Arteza white gel pen to trace around the gems just so that they would like look really um, I don't know, it would make them pop more, which I think it did. Um, and then to go with the jewel theme, I made the bumblebee look like it was gold. <coughs> Excuse me. So I really like this picture a lot. Um, <clears throat> another picture, uh, in, um, Rita B Berman's coloring books in my race at Dark Europa. And this is another one that I love. I love it so much. Look at that. Uh, I This is also a stamp. So I think 2023 was the year of discovering the stamp. And uh, I'm definitely planning on using it more because it gives a really cool background effect with a very little effort. It like puts something there. And I thought this um, newsprint stamp would be absolutely perfect for this picture. Uh, because, you know, it's this letter and it just, you know, added to the whole, like, doesn't that look so cool? So it added to the whole effect. So I stamped, I painted the watercolor background with um, that same pearlescent watercolor. Um, and then I went over it with a stamp. And then I colored these. Um with uh are those I think these were with brute funers because it's not looking like prismas and it's not looking too much like polychromos. Oh wait no 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 I used my Japanese Tombow pencils. Yeah the Kurtaki Tom Kurta no not Kurta the Tombow pencils. Yeah um because they have like different books that you can use the their sets are separated into uh, like little books so I used one um which I really like to do on um pictures that have um uh, like multiple different elements that I want to tie all together because they're colors that are already selected to work well together with um so anyways this one was really fun to work on I had so much fun working on it. Uh, and then I did embellishments with Arteza white gel pen, which is one of the best white gel pens that I've used. <clears throat> Excuse me. Obviously I try to use it everywhere. And then the last picture to show you, I don't know if I remember. Oh, this one, okay. This one was absolutely a dream. So this was the first picture that I discovered the stamp method. Um, so you can kind of see a little bit that it kind of comes through on the rose petals. Or it's not a rose. You know what this flower is. On the petals of the flower. Um because I stamped first uh, and then I went over with um, my Prismacolors because I figured those would give the most opaque coverage out of all of my pencils because I wanted to cover up the stamp that got into the flower and it didn't completely cover it but that's something I'm totally happy with because it um, has a really cool effect so it's very faint so uh, and then I used my 
uh, Fine Tech watercolor paint to do the embellishment <coughs> on these petals and these flowers right here. So it's nice and shimmery and this, I had so much fun working on this picture. Um, and I, I really wish that I would have had just more to be able to work on coloring, but um, I've also just dealt with a lot of guilt of like, well, with my current situation, when I, there's just some things that I'm trying to improve and I feel like if I have not improved that yet, I shouldn't color. And I know that's, it's counterintuitive because that just leaves me more stressed out. <laughs> so one of my goals for 2024 is to take more time to color and um, unwind and uh, because if I burn out, then I can't do the things that I need to do. So <laughs> uh, yeah, really focusing on making sure that I breathe. And coloring helps me do that so um oh i forgot to say also i embellished with you got it artisan white gel pen um so anyways let me know what your favorite picture out of all of these were um it's a it's a hard one for me but i think oh i even though i didn't get to color very much this year Everything that I did work on, I ended up really, really liking. Um, I, maybe just because I put a lot of thought into it. And I just realized I have another whip, but I left it at work. Uh, so I will show that another time. That one is turning out really cool. So I may, the next time that I make a completed picture video, I will be sure to show you. Um, I've also been working on a lot of other creative projects that I will show in a future video, but I just kind of wanted to focus on completed pictures for this video since that's kind of the highlight of, of it. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching. Thanks for taking the time out of your day and um, comment with one of your favorite pictures or something that you want to try that maybe one of them inspired you to do. And I hope to see you next time. Happy coloring!